Annyeonghaseyo Mnika. Today we are going to talk about the top five highest paid programming languages according to Stack Overflow Developer Survey of 2019. Clojure, F Sharp, Go, Scala, and Elixir. If you are like me, you maybe have never ever heard of any of these programming languages, and that is okay because they are very very weird. These programming languages are very good at something called functional programming and parallelism or concurrency. Functional programming is just a different way of thinking about your code. So for example, if you look at Python or Dart, they are very object oriented. That means that they have stuff called classes. They have stuff called this. They have inheritance, they have extends, they have all these kind of things that is object oriented. Everything is an object and it has some rules and whatever. The same thing will be with functional programming. They have functions, they have pure functions, they have impure functions, they have stuff like state, they have stuff like immutable, immutable state. There are different, just different ways of organizing your code. The second thing is concurrency or parallelism. So for example, in the case of Go, the creator has said that they just wanted to build a programming language, a language that takes advantage of a multi-core processing to be able to do stuff at the same time faster than ever before. That is concurrency and parallelism, kind of. It's just basically doing stuff at the same time. These languages are very good at using threads, using multi-core processors to do things fast at the same time, which is something amazing. Clojure is the top highest one. Clojure, I'm gonna show you how it looks here. Clojure is being used to do the diagnosis of the airplanes. Diagnosis tool to diagnose how everything on the plane is working. So they made a program that they plug in the airplane and that program diagnoses the airplane and then it says, okay, this airplane can fly. That's basically what Clojure is doing, which is unbelievable. Can you imagine that? Imagine if that Imagine if that program had an error, that would be insane. The second one is F Sharp. F Sharp was created by Microsoft. So, and also was created on the, with a very good portability to the net ecosystem. That net is like a Microsoft framework for doing stuff. So F Sharp is like the faster functional way of doing things. And you can talk to that net. The applications are not so fun. And when I was researching for like, who's hiring F Sharp programmers, what I saw is Facebook gaming, for example, was looking for F sharp programmers. The other one is Go, and Go is very, very popular nowadays. Because Go is very, very sexy, very easy to learn, is not ugly at all, and it's super freaking fast. So for example, many of the companies that we're running in Node.js are moving to Go. Um, Go is created by Google, so it's used a lot in Google. It's also used in YouTube, and it's also used for the download part of Google. So the server that handles the downloading of files in Google, that is built on Go. So it's really, really fast and people are liking it because it doesn't look so ugly. The other one is Scala. And people say that Scala is kind of like Java plus the best features. That's basically what Scala would be. So it's just like nicer functional Java. Twitter, for example, Twitter was created uh, with Ruby on Rails and eventually Ruby on Rails couldn't handle so many people so they have to move to something else and they moved to, to Scala. And the last, time I, the last time I checked, Scala was part of like 70% of the code base of Twitter. So it's handling pretty, pretty fucking well. The last one is Elixir. And Elixir is built on top of something called Erlang Virtual Machine. Erlang is a programming language that is very good at low latency. It's very good at fast speed of transmission of data. Why are these programming languages so well paid? And should you learn them if you want to have a good job in a company? What I think in this case is that, as you can see, the applications for these programming languages are so specific and so tiny that I feel that the hiring pool is very small, as well as the talent pool is very small. So very few people are good, are good at closure. 
and very few companies need closure programmers. That is the recipe for highest paid because if you're a good closure programmer, I know that there are companies out there that need only closure programmers, so they're going to pay you really, really well. But should you learn them if you are like me, that you like to get stuff done, that you don't enjoy programming for the sake of programming, that you don't have a specific problem to solve, then I would say learn a more general purpose programming language such as Python or JavaScript or C Sharp or even Java in that case. Not something so specific and something so niche. Also the community will be small and everything will be small. They're not bad programming languages at all, but it's not something that beginners should look up to like, oh my God, one day I wanna be a closure programmer because that's not just not a good idea. Uh, I would say definitely from the descriptions I gave you, look into the ones that you like the most, the ones that you're interested the most, and maybe spend a couple of weekends learning them to see if you like them or not, because also it can be fun. It doesn't have to be always about money. It could be also about fun. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of this video. Let me know with a like, let me know with a comment, subscribe, share to your friends. Be happy, eat kimchi, sangyeopsal, bibimbap, everything. Love you, bye-bye.